Good morning. Well, this is a beautiful sight. I'm so glad to see so many people have decided that they want to come out and express themselves when it comes to safer schools and ending school violence. So really proud of those of you guys who have decided to do that and respect everybody's wishes, regardless of how those differ. And so coming together to take action is such an important thing to do. And I'm very proud that our district and superintendent has created the space for us to do this as a group together and show that solidarity. So I really respect all of you for being a part of it. I just want to say that students across the nation are coming together today to remember those victims of a month ago in Parkland, Florida, the 17 staff and students and school community members. And we are going to take the time to do that here today. And we also want to take the time to let students share about the things that they are getting uh, involved in and leading with creating change and taking action. If it's something you feel strongly about, these guys are going to give you some, some, some ideas on things that you can participate in to make our school safer. Okay, And it starts with, if you see it, say it, do something about it, and stop school violence. We have to look out for each other and stop it before it starts and gets into our schools. So they're going to talk a little bit about that today. So I'm going to turn it over to them, and we're going to have some time to take some silence to remember the victims. So we appreciate everyone's respect and your show of support for those victims and their families. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Alex. A month ago today, 17 lives were lost from a tragic school shooting in Parkland, Florida. At this time, we're going to stop and take a moment of silence in their honor. We'll read each name of the 17 victims and have a moment of silence following each name. Alyssa Alhadef. Scott Beagle. Martin Duque. Nicholas Dorat. Aaron Fees. Jamie Gutenberg. Chris Hickson. Luke Hoyer. Cara Loren. Gina Montalo. Joaquin Oliver. Elena Petty. Meadow Pollock. Helena Ramsey. Alex Schachter. Carmen Shintrup. Peter Wayne.
you guys want to move down this way a little bit and stand in front so all students can see, take a moment. Thank you all very much. If you guys want to stand with me back here, and we would like to uh, take some time and hear from some of our students about how they're taking some action and moving forward with what they believe is the right thing to do. And we want to make sure to support you all in those decisions because we, we can't ever let anything like that happen here. And we have to do what we can to prevent that. So I would like to have a couple students join me here who have some things to share about efforts that they're taking to make sure this doesn't happen again. Hi, um, I'm Ellie, I'm a senior. Um, I just wanted to say a few words about how I feel and what we can do going forward. Um, it's unfortunate circumstances that I stand before you. Um, 17 lives were taken and it's not fair and it's not okay. Um, and it gives me personally a lot of hope to see so many people coming out um, and showing support and showing solidarity and so many young people at the school bringing signs. Um, it's like one of the greatest things I've ever seen. So I just want to say thank you for that. Um, so yesterday I did some interviews with Gabby and um, I did one of the things that you're not supposed to do on the internet and I read some of the comments um, and sorry. Um, I was overwhelmed with so much support and love in the comments, but <laughs> a lot of the comments got me thinking because they said things like, so what, you're just gonna walk outside and stand there for 17 minutes and then what, you're just a bunch of kids. And um, they're right, you know, we are just a bunch of kids. Um, but we've also been the victims of over 100 school shootings since Sandy Hook in 2012. And that's not okay. Sorry. So a question that I've been getting a lot lately is what are you really doing? Like, does this even mean anything? What, what steps are we actually taking to make a change? Because you know we can we can talk about these things and we can stand here, but what are we accomplishing? You know what do we hope to do and hope to get done? I hope that your involvement in the community and with our government doesn't end after today. I hope that you don't recycle your signs and walk away and go home and never think about this again because it does matter. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I encourage everybody here to keep fighting and to be strong with your voice, regardless of your age, because it's not just the seniors and the 18 year olds here who can do anything. You know, I know that a lot of people here plan on registering to vote today, thanks to Gabby, and I'm so grateful and proud of you guys for doing that. But a lot of you here still have a few years before you can register to vote. And I don't want you to be discouraged or think that nobody's listening to you because in my opinion, for the first time ever, people are listening primarily to the students and to the victims. Nobody is trying to step on our toes. This is our space to talk and open a dialogue and actually enact change. So I hope that those of you who maybe can't vote yet and can't like if you feel like you have no real power or nothing you can actually do because 
you can't vote in elections or change actual policy. I hope that you continue to talk about this. I hope that you say the names of the victims and never forget them. And I hope that you make sure that our representatives never forget them. So today I'm encouraging people to write letters to their representatives regardless of your age because they're adults and they don't know how we feel about this. Um, they don't know what we're going through and how we feel because they've never been the victims of anything like this. We've, we grew up in a post-Columbine society that has tried to normalize school shootings and that's not okay and we need people to realize that that's not okay and we won't be complacent and let that happen. So I need you all to go forward and use your voices and be strong and tell people that it's not okay. I'm encouraging everybody here to come out to the March for Our Lives on March 24th from noon to three at Rose Park Circle and share your voice and be in a crowd of people who are there for you and want to support you. And you can listen to some pe speakers and register to vote and write letters to representatives and the victims of Parkland there and be in a community that agrees with you and wants the same change that you do and has the same passion that you do. Because this is not a partisan issue. It's not Democrat versus Republican or gun control versus no gun control. Regardless of your party, no one agrees with school shootings and thinks that it's okay for children to be dying. So I want you all to realize that regardless of how you feel about this issue, as long as you're passionate about your lives, you're passionate about this issue. And I hope that you go forward and do something with this passion. With that being said, I'm going to pass it along to Gabby, who set up a voter registration table. So thank you. Thank you, Ellie. My name is Gabrielle Rabin. I'm another senior here at City. Um, I want to start off by saying that this should be the last time that we ever have to do this. We shouldn't have had to do it in the first place. And the, the fact that we as students are subjected to fear every day that we walk into school, the possibility that something like what happened in Parkland could happen every single day. And the fact that we are literally out here standing, trying to stand up for our lives, trying to speak out so that anyone will listen because it has been made clear that the current administration and politicians today are not going to do something without us standing up. And I want to thank all of you and send all of my gratitude to every one of you for coming out and standing here and making your voice heard. On that same note, I want to appeal to all of the seniors and juniors who will be turning 18 relatively soon. Our next local election is on May 8th and even local elections can be incredibly significant. Um, in terms of making change on a small scale and a large scale. In order to make true change happen, we need to not only make our voices heard at walkouts and rallies and by writing letters in support of the Parkland students and to our representatives, we need to make real change and real policy happen by voting. It's the most direct and efficient way to voice your opinion and to get past legislation that will make schools a safer place for students. I'll be hosting a table out in the hallway there after the walkout so that students who are going to turn 18 or who have already turned 18 will be able to register to vote. And I greatly encourage each and every one of you to do so. And if not, then to do so at the March next in a week or so on the 24th. This cannot happen anymore. This cannot be tolerated. And we need to speak up with all of the power we have because we are the voice of America. And in the next couple of years, all of us will have this same power and we need to use it because there's a great number of students and there are so many of us who can speak up regardless of what you believe is the right thing to do or the right way to solve this problem. You need to make that voice heard because right now we're not politicians and we don't have the same voice in government that they do. But with a vote and with, with speaking out at rallies and protests and walkouts like this, we can make positive change happen and we can make schools the safe environment for learning that they're intended to be. And we don't have to walk in fear every day. Enough is enough. This is the last time. It has to be. Thank you. I hope you guys realize people are paying attention. I mean, we can see by, by, by the show of, of folks here to witness what's going on. People are paying attention and your voices matter. To that end, we've 
I want you guys to raise your signs up to some people who are upstairs. We're going to snap some photos for our yearbook and our school. So please raise them up high and show, show your support for safer schools. So following this, we've got to make sure we're taking action and doing what you guys can do to move this agenda forward. So we have some uh, tables that are set up inside that Ellie and Gabby spoke to. We've also got a pledge banner in the cafeteria, which is pledging to end school violence. If you see it, if you see somebody who's struggling, if you see somebody that needs help, say something, get them the help they need, stop school violence, prevent it before it comes into the schools. All right, so we ask that people sign that pledge. That banner will be up all week. So take the time to do that. There's bracelets as well that are provided that are a show of solidarity for ending school violence. So take one of those, wear it. Make sure you get registered to vote. I know there's 18 year olds out there who are, who are gonna get registered today. For those of you who are six months out, sign up, get registered, pay attention, get your vote out. This is nothing more important than safety in schools. And I just again want to say, I appreciate you guys coming out and showing support and solidarity for ending school violence and safety in schools. I couldn't be more proud. So I just want to say thank you again to the district for a whole, for coming together and walking out as a whole, right? There's solidarity there. And I think there's massive numbers of people doing this across our city and across the nation today. And that support is noticed and that action matters. So thank you so much for taking the time to do that. So as we finish up today, guys, please take your time, stop in, get some information on the March for Our Lives campaign, voter registration, and sign the pledge to end school violence. Thank you, guys.